Welcome to the show, my dear. <laughs> the show. Welcome to the show. <laughs> oh my gosh, someone just someone just texted or in the chat said this is gold. They didn't say gold. that about John. They said that, that you're gold, so I hope you're ready. Woo! Woo! Well, I'll tell my, will you send David a, a text and tell yep. him that? He might not think I'm so much gold right now. <laughs> For sure. Okay, everybody, so here we go. We are going to dive into Miss Terry right now. We're going to learn all about, uh oh, someone just said that's a big time coach right there. Well, um, that would be a lady I've known for a long time. I just saw that text. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's dive into this. So, who is Terry? Tell us who you are. What's your superpower? Hit us. Superpower. Woo! Okay, so um, I've been in this industry since 1983. So I've been, this is pretty much all I know, you know, cause I was 12 is the joke. Right. And, um, I got in because my family was in and I was going to be a, an, a, an, an elementary education teacher and I would have hurt the children. Um, that was probably not real good to say. That's not good. That's not my uh, strength zone. So long story short, got my license, uh, in Oklahoma, my first trainer was Mo Anderson. She owned a, com owned a company called Pro Development. She's actually my first productivity coach and probably wish she hadn't have been at the time. Mm -hmm. um, long story short, ended up with a top independent in the market. Um, then we went to, I got an opportunity to join Sherry Lewis and Mo Anderson in 1996 and opened a Keller Williams Market Center in Owasso, Oklahoma. Okay. Right outside of Tulsa. And, um, 1996, I was 33 years old. Do the math. So I was one of those young people at the time. Keller, who, uh -huh. you know, who are you? And we grew our market center to number one in the market. We've been up to as much as 40% market share here. Wow. Uh, got the opportunity to become an operating partner and an investor partner with some really amazing talent that I still mm -hmm. am with. And, Let's see what else. Oh, oh, and Mo, Mo did say to me when I was still a team leader, which I was for 16 and a half years, uh -huh. I was still a team leader. And Mo said, Terry, uh, I need you to be a maps coach. Hmm. I'm like, I want to do that. So I did it because Mo said to, and here I am uh, still a maps coach. This is my almost getting going on 11th year. And I've wow. not been a team leader for seven years. So all of this adjustment that we've made, learning to work from home, I had to learn to do that about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, very good. Well, very good. So, uh, and we go back. We we've known each other for quite some time. Yeah. We've had a few catalyst events together. Yes, sir. Uh, have been really, really good. You 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 coach my beloved Dana, and uh, pr pr let me just praise you for that. <laughs> Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's better your ear than mine, I guess. Yes, she may you. coach me sometimes. <laughs> so let's dive into this right now. Okay. Uh, and, and for all of our listeners, we're going to go through the same questions here uh, that we just did with John. We're going to do it for all of our, our guests today. So the question is, as the market and the world is shifting, how do you stay a strong and authentic leader, not only for yourself, for all your clients, for all your people you're leading, so on and so forth? How do you do that? You know what? It, it goes back to being personally centered. Like you've got to know who you are emotionally, spiritually, and energetically. And those may sound like really hokey words, but in this time, that is really what we have to lean on. Um, you know, I, I think people get a little challenged and then some people get under challenged. When we're in a market like this or when we're in a time of uncertainty. And this is a great time to do what we call wipe the slate clean or create a, 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 a white canvas so that you can recreate. It's now more important than ever that you still have a calendar. Even if you're sitting in your home office or you're sitting at the breakfast bar in your kitchen or your bedroom at a desk, whatever that looks like, you've got to have a schedule. And um, you've got to still go to bed on time. You've got to get up on time. You've got to get dressed. You've got to, people are like, why are you showing up to these things with makeup on? Because that's the one thing my mom really taught me. Well, you get up like you don't know what your day's going to look like. So that served me well over the past mm -hmm. few years. And you've got to stay healthy. You've got, and I don't mean like stay away from everybody. I mean, you've got to keep your body healthy. I think right now 
people are learning more than ever. I'm learning how to do boot camp at home. I mean, go figure. Right. Um, on a video, we're learning how to take care of ourselves easy. So the most important thing I can say are those things, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and, and have a calendar that you're still at work. Mm -hmm. Still at work. Yeah, absolutely. That's really, really good. So speaking of that, let's dive into what are your daily routines right now? So they've changed a little bit, but again, some of them may have stayed the same. So what, what does that look like for you spiritually, mentally, physically? What, what, what are you doing? You know what? Mine, because I, because I did have to literally home office a few years ago, um, I'm used to being home, and I'm one of those weird people. Anybody that has roomed with me or stayed with me at any event, they know I have a schedule. I've got a health schedule. I get up. I read a little bit. I work out. Minimum I do might be walk six days a week. And then my calls start at 645 to 7 in the morning. And I pretty much go nonstop with a few breaks. I know when I need a break. I know what my body has to drink and eat. And when I say drink, I mean like lemon water and you know, <laughs> tea. Right. Yeah. I, right. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, or my, you know, Gaga cup for that go. my kids got me. with decaf coffee. Like I cannot have a lot of caffeine. Um, and I just go and then I have it. My, my admin has a lunch break built in where it, she's got eat next to it because I'll be that person that will tend not to, I'll just go. Right. So those are the things I, I have a schedule. If I sent you my calendar, you would see all those things on my schedule. There's really not a lot of white space. Uh, yep. The only white space I have is uh, returning emails, uh, returning phone calls. And right now that seems to be taking me into seven, seven thirty at night, which is wow. not typical. I, I try to end my day around four to four thirty, right. five o'clock at the latest. And um, I'm not getting to travel to the market centers that I'm an investor partner. in. so that's been the big part of what's changed for me. Mm -hmm. so, and everything's on zoom now that's been a change we all, we did calls right. we're starting to move more towards zoom in fact i'm having a lot of clients that are like i don't need another zoom let's just talk <laughs> on the phone. i can't look at the computer anymore and i kind of get that right, right? yeah so, yeah I've, 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 I've got the blue blockers right isn't that what we're supposed to have we're supposed to have these <laughs> blue blockers that you're supposed to yeah. block blue rays yeah yeah and, and I'm going to say, fill your mind. Um, I turn off the news during the day unless David walks in and puts on Fox and then I go in there and turn it off because I can slightly hear it. I don't want any of that eking into my world. I can't. I, I need to focus. I've got to be there right now for everybody that needs me. And I continue just to fill my head um, when I need to. The thing that I've learned the most is in the morning, it's quiet. Yeah. I don't turn anything on. I don't check email. I don't listen to music. I do my reading in the quiet or I do my stretching yoga, whatever in the quiet. The only time I listen to music is when I'm working out and um, you, I have, that's been the most difficult thing to me for me to learn is quiet. Your brain needs to detoxify and the only way it can do it is to have silence. So I would encourage everybody like my coach did me, Terry, just sit in silence every morning for five minutes. Don't have anything in your hand. Don't have anything on. Just let the silence work. And I've worked my way up on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's been interesting. And now I get a little irritated if there's noise. Really? Because your yeah. brain's got to declutter. You can't take any more in if you don't declutter. And there's a lot going on right now. Right. So, so, so let's, let's, let's just for like 30 seconds, 45 seconds, let's be vulnerable real quick. Because you are very regimented. You're very uh, time blocked. And you are a massive leader and coach for many, many people. Mm -hmm. There are times, though, where the, 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 the superwoman Terry can maybe get <laughs> down just a little bit, right? So, yeah. so what do you do? So for all the people, over 200 people that are listening right now, uh, knowing that leaders, we have to be strong-minded, but there are certain times where we have to take care of ourselves, mm -hmm. right? What do you do to take care of yourself if, if the mindset starts to waver just a little bit? You know, I'm older than probably a lot of people on here, and I've learned over time because I used to hide mm -hmm. in um, by being busy. That was a great place for me to hide because if I had thinking space to be vulnerable, I didn't know how to control that energy. And when I mean energy, I don't mean like whoo energy. I mean we all have energy. Sure. And you, you literally. Well, I guess I should, you asked me personally, I literally know when I, I just have to shut off. So I have prioritized 
who I need to call back, who I need to text back, who I need to email back. And I literally still keep a, a spiral next to me everywhere I'm at. And I write down thoughts that I have. And at the end of the day or people that have texted me or called me, I literally just keep it as a visual um, because at the end of the day, they really aren't an emergency sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes by the end of the week, they're not an emergency. And that has been a practice. So we have to first observe, when am I feeling like this? Because if you don't start fixing it now, you will physiologically, something's going to show up. For me, um, my, I was carrying Lyme's disease and I didn't know I had it. Mm. And my body got so worn down um, about 10 years ago, close to it. I didn't feel like I could get out of bed. And mm. it was because physiologically my brain, um, which was overwhelmed, caused my body to start shutting down. Wow. And for, for some people, it's blood pressure. For some people, it's a heart attack, right? And for some people, it's just physical illness. So I would, if I could tell anything to anybody right now is please pay attention to when you feel anxiety or when you feel stress. Start observing what caused me to have that? And where am I feeling it? Am I feeling it in my stomach, my head, my heart? Because in, in the brain world, we call those chakras. And they quite frankly mean something wherever you feel it. Mm -hmm. And you've just got to You can't control it until you observe where it's coming from. And there may come a point. Um, it was like me when I stepped down from the team leader role. I knew there was a point that that part of my life needed more of the me than what I was willing to give at that point. And those people needed more. They deserved more. Those people in that office deserved a whole lot more than what I was physically capable of giving them right then. Right. So observe it. I Never. would say start Never. listening to your body. That's what I just wrote down, observe. Okay, so let's shift now from leadership and taking care of ourselves and those around us into actually recruiting, right? So yeah. the system and, and, and the company that we have, I love recruiting. We have a vision of recruiting 100 million people before I turn 60. So we've got to figure out how to do this, right? Um, and we, we have a quote, we have a, uh, an equation inside of I love recruiting, and it is recruiting equals influence equals leadership. And that actual equation can, can be inverse as well. Leadership equals influence equals recruiting. Yeah. So let's talk about you as a an equation, right? The, the recruiting aspect of Terry. Um, what is it about you? What is it about recruiting that you actually enjoy? What what is it? What what type of energy does that actually bring you? You know what? Um, if somebody asked me, Terry, how many people have you actually recruited? And the answer is, I know it's way up there. Um, However, I don't know who has come just because of the conversation that we may have had. Mm -hmm. Recruiting is not a one-time event. It's a relationship and it is influence. And all they care about is that you, not that you know everything, they care that you know who to connect them to or what to connect them to. With, with everything that's going on right now and with technology, we're all having to learn a whole new different world. I may not know the exact answer. I do know who to connect them to. And I know where to go get my answers from. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. You know, John Maxwell says leadership is influence, nothing more than nothing less. We've heard that 100 zillion times. And I believe right now that is highly, highly true. I think that, you know, because of who we're connected to um, mm -hmm. says a lot about where we are. The energy I get from recruiting is that people actually discover something they didn't learn before. Mm. So when they leave, I want them to leave my presence or my Zoom presence or whatever conversation. Let's just call it that. Whenever they leave a conversation with me, I want them to feel like they, they've learned something new or they heard something that made them think. If I have the ability to make them think, that's all the recruiting conversation should be about. I love I, it. You, we can't change people's minds and we can't make them understand. We can help them think. Right. What, what, what are some of your practices or strategies on making someone think? Keep asking questions. Mm. Quit giving them the answer. <laughs> uh, you, you know, I think we all get guilty of that, right? In fact, my coach years ago, I had to, I had to do an exercise where I walked in an appointment with what was called the need benefit action plan. And I, at the top of my paper, now I do it on my notebook or I, I now use an audit format. Um, but, you know, I wrote down that I had to come out of that appointment knowing what their biggest need was, how they benefited from having that need met, mm -hmm. what their plan was, like what's their plan, 
And then what kind of action did I need to format around that? Mm -hmm. Right. So it was nothing but questions. And usually when people would answer one of those questions, like what's your biggest need? And they'd say it, I'd go, Oh my gosh, I've got the answer. And I totally off track, totally off track. It's just like now when we draw the circles and we say, this is your business. Mm -hmm. You know, where, where are you getting your business from? And they start answering those questions. We all naturally want to go, oh my gosh, I've got the solution. And my coach had me grip my pen with both of my hands. It was my anchor. Mm -hmm. That was my mental anchor to not talk. Right. So the, the biggest detriment that we, we have is talking. And by telling people what they're going to do. And this is in any relationship, whether it's, you know, with people that are on your leadership team inside of a market center or it's your family any coach, I mean, anybody that's in your world, church, civically, when we start telling them the answers to things we don't know enough about yet, we've just really ruined the productivity in that relationship. So, that, and I think, do what? You're almost enabling them. By telling them yes. the solution, you're almost enabling them to, for enabling them to not really get to their true potential by themselves, or at least led to their true potential. And we wonder why they don't come. Well, because we don't know what the real objection is because right. we haven't asked enough questions. In fact, you know, there's a whole process, as you know, of narrowing down those objections. So I think staying open is our biggest challenge and staying curious consistently. There are about five to 10 questions you can ask off of every answer that someone gives you. And if you've never done the exercise where you take some of the things that you heard in an appointment and start writing, okay, what else could I have asked? 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 And some, when you get so great at the art of answer, asking questions and not being scripted around it and just being authentically you, right. you're going to win. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, transition real quick too. Because again, we, we are in a very unique time right now. Our environment is completely foreign to what we've ever really experienced before. Yeah. Now, we've been in shifts before. We've been in economical shifts, but maybe not like a pandemic shift. I mean, we've seen this yeah. when Brad Pitt usually gets out of it. But, but <laughs> I mean, I'm not Brad. I, I don't know how this is going to end. However, some of the recruiters right now are a little apprehensive to recruit. Yes, they are. What would you say to someone that is a little apprehensive to get out there and recruit or influence or lead? What, I mean, what would you say to someone? How would you coach them? First of all, the relationship should never have ever changed. Mm. This is just bringing it to light. This is my fourth shift, I think. Never, like you said, never has it involved health right. where we've been told to be home. And, and I believe, like I said, there are going to be efficiencies that outlive what we're doing right now. Um, we're going to take them into the future. Um, but, in you know, it it kind of goes back, I'm going to say this in a very respectful way. It goes back to the philosophy of belonging to an association of realtors. So for many of us that before now we were, we were partners. Many of you guys were probably presidents of associations of realtors, even NAR. You've served on committees at NAR. This is that whole attitude of locking arms and moving forward together. Mm -hmm. So if we are talking to people, it's okay to acknowledge we're all in this together. We may be at different brokerages. Acknowledge that. In fact, Dana and I took a script that I was playing with and massaged it. And uh, it's turned out pretty good that, you know, we're, let's acknowledge that we're with different brokerages. Right. And let's also acknowledge that the real estate community needs us right now. Mm -hmm. And let's lock arms and move forward. How can we share things together so that we keep this economy going inside of our marketplace? Because if I don't list homes, you're not going to have a buyer for them. And if you don't list, I write, it's all going to intertwine together. So mm -hmm. take the idea that this is about a relationship phone call right now and ask enough questions, even to the extent where you say, you know what, I would love to share some of the online or remote training that we're doing with you. Can I verify your email address? And then also just say, is there anything that you're doing that I could be involved in if it's allowed? And how would that work? And, oh, by the way, I'm going to create a private Facebook page for anybody that's involved in our training. And would you like to be a part of that? And if there's anything you can share from your perspective, you're making them also, you know, um, a partner. Let's just call it that. You're making them a partner in what you're trying to do. And Gary said it just a little while ago. 
you know, he didn't say it this way. I'll just use Terry's language. What people remember about us in this time is what they're going to remember about us. Mm, good one. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that I'm going to give credit to an OP in, in Canada that gave me that last week. And if we're out heavily recruiting right now, we could break that partnership. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying don't recruit right now is opportune for us to do it. It's how we approach it. Yeah. It's how I we see. approach it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the time that we have left, because I know you're a very time block person, uh, and we're two minutes over on my time block. So oh, sorry. Three, that's okay. Top three things that you would suggest someone do on a daily basis right now, either pertaining to leadership or and pertaining to recruiting. What are they? I have I have five, but I'll Ooh, narrow it down. Okay, so um, um, don't take anyone you love for granted. Mm, good one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pick that one. The next thing I would say is discipline. In fact, I'm going to do a podcast this week on health at home, and we're going to be talking about uh, creating discipline inside your ca calendar because, well, you have to understand that if you're having office on the couch, that's your relaxing time. Your brain knows that. Yep. There are things your brain knows. So discipline about your calendar. You can have a calendar even when you work at home. That would be number two. And then um, every day, set three, right now, every day, ask yourself, what are, or have your coach ask you, what are the three things that if I accomplish them today would make me feel powerful? Just three. Mm. Right? I've been asking people all morning, what are, the three, what are the three things you want to accomplish today, tomorrow, that if you did them, you'd feel powerful? That and it's the great. words, it's just the words we're using. People need to feel powerful right now about what they do. They definitely, definitely do. Terry, that was incredible. I mean, I got, I have a whole page of notes here right here. This oh. is really, really good. Thank so, you. okay, so how can people go find you? I know you do a podcast. Tell us real quick about that, Matters okay. of Influence. Partnered with Debbie Fratt, mattersofinfluence.com is the website. There are training resources available because we do training. Um, that has to do with mindset, assessments, emotional intelligence, energy, you name it. It's all on there. And not all of it, but most of it. A little bit of John Maxwell stuff is on there, NLP. Um, and we have a Facebook page, mattersofinfluence.com. And, of course, you can find me on Facebook, Terry Foster Nowland. I've kept that hyphenated name. Got one of the longest names on Facebook. Sorry. <laughs> if you want to email me with more questions, it's just Terry, T-E-R-R-I-E. At kw.com. Gotcha. Perfect. Okay. And everybody listening, uh, Terry will give us some scripts. She'll give us some things. We're going to post it on, um, well, they have to go to iloverecruiting.com and then we'll okay. put their names and we will send you any of the information that you give us, including where to find you in your podcast and how to go listen to your podcast. Cause it is perfect. perfect. We love it. Thank you, my dear. Thank you for your time. This has been you incredible. Bet. Thank you, Adam. Absolutely. Love you guys. Stay well. We will talk to you soon. Okay. Have See a great you. day.